Okay, we are now um, recording our session. And I want to say welcome to this session once more. Um, welcome, sir. Yeah, last um, session, we concluded uh, everything about the tools in project management. So we've got the good knowledge of all the essential tools we can um, uh, use or we need to use as um, an effective project manager. So tonight we are going to be um, looking at the project management methodologies. We have different methodologies you can approach a project from. So we need to look at uh, some of them. We have so many of them in the market. Some are getting old, some are new, uh, some are very popular. So we need to look at the three most popular ones. We have um, agile project management, we have uh, waterfall project management, and we have uh, Prince 2 project management. These are the three most popular project management methodologies in the market today. We have others like extreme programming, but we are going to limit um our studies to this tray so if you are building your knowledge you want to develop get more you can start researching doing but for now this tray is enough so why i'm just uh, picking this tray is um you don't know where you are going to work whichever company organization globally not uh, limiting us to UK, I'm look, talking about globally, you should be able to apply these three project management methodologies. So let's get started. We are going to start from agile project management. Uh, from experience, uh, past record, I cannot finish uh, presenting agile uh, the three of them today is not something you can finish the three topic um three project management methodologies today so today or tonight we are going to look at only agile then next time on monday we fi we finish um we can combine waterfall and um, prince two so um Chine, you're welcome <clears throat> so um i'll start presenting thank you sir yeah so this is agile project management so this is, this diagram is how Agile works. In Agile, we have a framework that is the heart of Agile. And this is how the framework looks like from product backlog, we have a sprint planning, we have a sprint backlog, we have a, a Scrum team, we have daily Scrum, we have a sprint retrospective, we have an increment, we have a sprint um, review. So that is how it looks like. But let's dive in and get it from the general overview and start drilling down. So let's look at this brief definition of agile project management. Agile project management are iterative approach to project management that prioritize flexibility, collaboration, and responsiveness to change. These methodologies promote incremental delivery of project deliverable. 
frequent stakeholder feedback, adaptive planning to accommodate evolving requirements and prioritizing priorities throughout the project life cycle. So, the key words we need to look at in this particular definition, we we'll look at this flexibility, because you can see say prioritize flexibility. So, which I will highlight them and we'll talk about them in this context. Then we'll have collaboration and we'll have a responsive to change. And um, we have frequent stakeholder feedback. And we have evolving requirements. These are keywords here that are very well. All these keywords I'm highlighting, they are very important. It's something you have to deal with. You have to deal with them every day as a project manager in agile that's why i'm highlight so you if you need to cram them cram them but the main thing is just to understand them it's not difficult so. okay what is this flexibility flexibility means that agile promotes flexibility while delivering a project, unlike our traditional method of project management. Our traditional approach is called waterfall. Waterfall has been the approach and is a very rigid approach that once the projects have started, it's difficult to change a requirement. A project or deliverable is very difficult to you know modify your project scope it's not that it, it cannot be done but it's so bureaucratic the bottleneck is high you need to go through a lot of paperwork before a change can be um, accepted in an ongoing project so that is how it um, looks like but in agile the owner of that particular project or the, the project sponsor can bring any requirement at any point in time and the team will accept it and incorporate it in the ongoing project activity why do we why is agile promoting this flexibility the story of agile is that agile started as a project in managing complex activities or complex environment we call it projects we use to manage complex activities what are that kind of complex activities software development is highly complex and it changes fast the market is changing so fast as you are working on one particular software, within two months, you are, it can be also let another software can come into the market and uh, make your own particular software so also let. So you need to, for you to compete within the software market, you need to be highly adaptive and change. And if you are not flexible, then you cannot, uh, keep up to the pace of the market. So that is where the flexibility comes in. Then what is the collaboration? Agile means that uh, Agile promotes collaboration in project environment. You feel that the team need to collaborate. When team are working towards a project, they need to meet very often. They need to collaborate. They need to, you know, unlike um waterfall that believes so much in documentation once the documentation is done everything waterfall is doing is based on documentation 
is according to the paper. But Agile says that collaboration is better than high comprehensive documentation. So if you are using Agile, you find out that in Agile project management, there are so many events. Team working in Agile, working in or delivering a project, they meet on daily basis. And meeting on daily basis is not by calling phone and it's not by sending email. They need to meet physically, but these days is no longer physical because they can just meet using um, video conferencing. But even within the video, video conferencing meeting, everybody must show their face. If you are putting on a camera, you must put, if you are using like what we are doing now, you see everybody switched off their camera. In Agile, what we call daily stand-up. If we are using video conferencing, everybody must put on their camera. The Agile promotes that kind of collaboration. And this responsive to change means uh, it's just like it's a uh, it work hand in hand with the flexibility when there is a change the team need to respond to that change as quickly as possible then looking at uh, frequent stakeholder feedback this is where agile this particular activity Frequent stakeholder feedback is what uh, stood agile, uh, made agile very prominent in the market today because they listen to stakeholder feedback, customer feedback. This particular activity is what a company called Apple. Apple used Agile methodology to take over the phone industry today. Before it used to be Nokia. Nokia do not collect any feedback from customers. What Nokia does is Nokia will just produce one phone. Uh, we know how they started 3310. They will deploy it to the market. Everybody will buy it because people do not have an alternative. That is market monopoly. And they don't care about what the people feel. The next time they will create another type of phone and push it to the market. But when Apple comes into the market, Apple started producing iPhone. And then they will call it iPhone 1, iPhone 2, iPhone 3. And what they do is that after each iPhone, Apple will try as much as they can to gather feedback. They will even pay to get feedback from users, customers. Based on the feedback they collected from the users, that will determine what is coming out on the iPhone 2. And when the iPhone 2 is out, they will start collecting feedback on iPhone 2. This feedback comprises of what the customer want to see in their next iPhone. What part of the feature or part of the current version they do not like. These are the things they ask customers. And after capturing feedback, that feedback they capture becomes another requirement. They are going to take into their uh, for their project uh, team to work on and that is how they keep on doing it and today they took over the market every other person in the market started following them and people started readjusting to adapting agile uh, samsung uh started um, adapting to this kind of change. Samsung adopted Agile. When Nokia is 
adopting agile is it becomes late by then samsung um iphone has already become the market leader and when other companies see what is happening they started adopting agile methodology facebook adopted agile methodology when facebook started facebook was just like a very tiny um social media application where people can just share images you don't even use it to share um videos just images we already have other application way before facebook we we'll have um skype we we'll have a yahoo messenger but when facebook came facebook adopted agile and Facebook will be collecting feedback, what people want. People will say, we want a forum in Facebook where we can collaborate. People will say, we want a group in Facebook. Facebook will add it. People will say, we want to start streaming in Facebook. Facebook will add it. People will say, we want a marketplace in Facebook. And when Facebook, today, because Facebook is listening to stakeholders, they keep capturing a uh, requirement from stakeholders. This requirement is called feedback. And today, Facebook is now like, if you are not on Facebook, then you is, maybe you are dead. So this is agile in action. And agile becomes so, so popular and everybody started using it. And today, based on my experience, every organization even those that are not already migrated fully on the process of migration moving from their traditional approach to agile approach even those that are not uh that do not want to use agile fully they combine agile and the uh, traditional approach which is a waterfall so that is um the story of agile that is how agile came into force it's because agile what agile does is that agile will help you to develop small small tiny uh softwares or tiny features and you can keep on developing it and adding it to the bigger product so that is the agile in nature for instance this is a product this particular software we are using now this is a, a google doc is a product and if we want to start scaling this product all we need to do is within agile we keep capturing more requirements what agile does is that you see this uh file agile will capture requirement called file and within file if you click on file you see so many features smaller smaller features called user stories they will keep on capturing it now you can see you can even share before all these are not here but you see this is because this is a very big uh complex software because the features in this particular google doc is uncountable so this is what you can use agile to do keep on increasing or scaling up your products and today the story of agile is if you are not if you are if you're in it and you are not using agile then you've not started so that is how agile become prominent so now that i've painted the picture of what agile is all about the story of agile how company use agile to succeed the future of agile it's time to start looking at agile uh in detail looking at agile principles and other frameworks in agile these are the key principles of agile agile i've got four key principles okay look at it Number one is iterative approach. What is iterative approach? It's agile method that divides 
project work into smaller manageable iteration or increment known as sprint or iteration typically ranging from one week uh, to four weeks each iteration results in potential shippable product increment allowing stakeholders to provide feedback early and often so this iterative approach means that agile adopted a framework called scrum and in this scrum there is uh, a method they use a smaller time frame to deliver value so within this short time frame the team must deliver value because of this it helps company to constantly urging the team to bring something to table so this framework uses sprint and sprint is a period of time between one week and one month so one week to four weeks you can choose two weeks you can choose one week you can choose three weeks you can choose four weeks but you cannot choose more than four weeks but before the team can bring something to the table so it means that if the team is working on agile every let's just call it every one month every one month the team must develop one feature so if we are working on this particular product this particular google doc it means that on monthly basis this google doc must have an additional feature can you see how wonderful this particular approach is on daily basis so if they are mean to create these particular features in one year they will start building them one by one for instance in one at one month they they will create a feature called new another month they will create another feature called open another month they will create another feature called they can create two but a minimum minimum is that they must produce a value so they can create up to three if they have the capacity they can create up to four in a month but minimum is that they must create at least one value one value is one feature and in waterfall what waterfall does is that if waterfall want to build this particular application and they say that they are going to build this in one year and once they start they cannot deploy any value they have to wait until they completed all these features from new to print before they can deploy it to the market. You find out that before they can build from new to print and deploy to the market, the product is no longer viable. It becomes obsolete. But Agile, when Agile starts building this kind of uh, uh, features, which they want to build in one year, every month they'll be, uh, uh, uh giving us new new releases so they will keep the customers happy and engaged and as they are building out each releases they are capturing requirement reviews as they are deploying to the market they are capturing uh, uh reviews and requirements and improving the product as they are capturing requirements that is how they are improving on the product so that is how um, so that is how this works. That is a uh, iteration. Iteration means building small, small software within a short period of time and keep deploying keep on bringing value at the at the shorter in interval you know they believe in bringing small small 
is better for us than just bringing the whole trailer load once. So give, keep us giving us value, on continually giving us value. That's it. And you find out that organization, they are happy because customers are always engaged. You keep them happy. You keep on collecting review. You keep on giving them new team. The market wants new team. If you give them everything in bulk, they might not have time to start using the whole features. But if you give them every feature every month, you find out everybody will be engaged in each feature you are bringing out. And that is what Facebook is doing. Facebook will continue to give us every feature that comes out in Facebook. You see people running around to see how that feature works. So the second principle here is collaborative teamwork. Agile methodology emphasizes on collaboration and communication among cross-functional team, including project managers, developers, designers, and stakeholders. Team, teams work closely together throughout the project uh, life cycle, sharing knowledge, insight, and responsibility to deliver high quality value. So people must collaborate. There is a lot of meeting, a lot of events in Agile. We have a daily stand-up where the team comes to meet every day. We have um, uh, sprint review where the team comes to uh, de demonstrate what they've done to the stakeholder at the end of every sprint. Uh, we have um, uh, sprint retrospective where the team need to come together to inspect and adapt. These are various meetings. We have a, a sprint planning meeting. We have a, a requirement a refinement meeting. We call it a, a backlog grooming. We have different meetings where people come together in Agile to work together. And this is what is Agile. Agile people coming together, brainstorming, bring us uh, better value than having a meeting like what is going on in um, Waterfall. Waterfall, the final that team members do not meet on daily, on daily basis. All they do is that maybe at the end of the week, the team members will come together, have one meeting called um, daily or read meeting to capture the risk associated and everybody will be working on their own as at the end of the team at the end of the week the, the team will come together have a read log meeting and so but agile believes so much in collaborative teamwork then customer collaboration because every product is to make the customer happy. So we need to collaborate with the customer. That is what the Agile is saying. Agile methodology prioritizes customer satisfaction by involving stakeholders, end users, customers in the project development process. Regular stakeholder feedback and user involvement help to ensure that the project delivers high value and meets customers need effectively and that is why i when i use um, google doc if they if you deliver this new feature new, uh, new as a feature or open as a feature you, demo, you deliver it to the customer you invite customers for a demo after demo you collect uh, feedback from the stakeholders it does not end there after collecting feedback from stakeholders, then you must have to collect feedback from users as well to understand the way users feel about their product. And that's why today, most products, even in Amazon e-commerce, once you purchase their product, they will start chasing you around. You keep on seeing pop up on your phone or on your application. Give us a review. They will be chasing you to collect review from you. 
because this review is what how you feel about the product if you are not happy about the product they will quickly uh, based on their feedback they will modify and improve the pro the product and that's what we call continuous improvement in agile so that's what agile is promoting continuous improvement if you if you created a feature you continue to improve it and it keep on improving it so then adaptive planning that is the fourth principle agile embrace change and uncertainty recognizing that project requirements and priorities may evolve over time agile team adapt and adjust their plan processes and their deliverable based on feedback and changing circumstances maximizing project flexibility and um, responsibility so adaptiveness is responsive to change as as the market is changing you are you are responding effectively following the trend that is agile according to agile you ride the trend as the trend is good just keep following the trend you cannot fight the trend nobody fights the trend it is not it's, it's difficult to fight the trend so and that is if you are working on a project on agile and if it becomes obsolete you just drop it and you find out that what bond nokia so much is nokia is working on producing a particular set of uh, um phone which is not um, um screen touch you know agile uh, this um apple started this uh touch screen everybody is using now but apple when apple started it every other person said that this touch screen is very good with cameras but Nokia find it difficult to adopt it. They keep on believing on their, but the market is changing. They refuse. But when they decided to start modifying their product to start factoring touch screen and this is already late. So they are still in the market, but they should have been the leader in the market, but they didn't respond to change. It was difficult adapting to the market change. And in today's business, customers have realized that they have so much power. And because there is so much competition, so customers can easily abandon their products. If you look at what is going on in social media, we have like different social media now. So when you don't give customers what they want they will just migrate to another social media in group and that is what is happening today even in banking sectors you can see the way digital banking or fintech is taking over all the traditional banking institutions they are all of them are struggling because digital banking is taking over you see, for instance, in Nigeria, you see what OPE is doing. You see what uh, uh, OPE and their group, what they are doing. They've taken over. Other banks are just there struggling to cope. They started, these days, they are now started the, the, developing uh, other applications like OPE, trying to compete with OPE, Pampe, and the rest of them. But it's, it's becoming late because OPE now becoming OPE and the group are now becoming a household name for the new generation. And that is how all these banks like Zenith and they will soon become like U Union Bank and they'll be fizzled out of the market. In the UK today, look at Monzo Bank started a few, few, few years ago, but Monzo is taking over everything nobody is talking about backless the new generation this is what they are talking about 
They are not talking about backless. They are talking about Tide, Bonzo, and the rest of these are digital banks. They, they don't even have uh, all of them. You just like one office. You cannot even see their office. But people love them. That is what the markets demand. Digital application. But other banks like uh, Zenith Bank, Barclays Bank, it was difficult for them to start because they are feeling they are there. Nobody. But these other new applications are beginning to disrupt them because this new application adopted Agile. So that's what I mean, adapting, ad adapting to change, being adaptive, responding to change. So that is all Agile is doing today in today's market. All this disruption is seen everywhere. Agile is doing this disruption. You know, for instance, looking at even this our our own business. I'm using other business. I'm not talking about our own. This um, digital education. We're into these days. We call it edutech. Now a lot of people can be at their home, assess quality service, quality education, quality content, whereby you will listen and it will be recorded and uploaded for you to go back. How many, how many lecturers can do that in conventional universities? You look at the time you take you to prepare, you go to lecture, you have to wait for lecturer. For, when lecturer come, at the end of the day, Lecturer will write on the board and lecturer will prompt you to get um buy handout, buy this. People are no longer interested in this. At the end of the day, you are doing all this, you are not even sure of getting a job. Because now I have a class, even in Nigeria, so many of them join. Some people are comparing what they've witnessed within a short period of time. They were with me with their four years in the university saying, that, you know, this is agile in nature. And we're all, all the, asking them to give us review. As they are bringing review, we are strategizing, modifying our content, modifying our approach, making them education, making education to be fun. But people, education become, become, become so difficult because the people in the education industry make this education to become horrible and even when you tell a child to go to school the child feels that life is a punishment but when you make it fun everybody will want to go to school and this is what technologies we can use technologies agile to understand what people want and incorporate it in the way we do things looking at religious activities that is agile in nature. Let's look at uh, Pastor Jerry. Some of us in Nigeria know this young man. Look at the way he has disrupted religious activities. Now, he's now on Facebook. People go to church on the Facebook. As a matter of fact, there's never a, a time they say that church is a building. Church is a word of God. And it can be administered from any area, not in the, it mustn't be in the building. And people are taking that advantage, understanding what people need, and tailoring their, even their, their church service to suit the people. And some people will say, uh, you didn't go to church, you must go to church physically before you. The world is changing, and agile is disrupting this world. So that is what agile is all about responding to changes capturing customers need giving the one they want so let's look at the framework in agile this framework is the heart of agile what makes agile what agile is and that's what we call scrum Scrum is a very powerful framework in Agile that use this iterative approach. This iterative is this, you see this diagram, 
This is two, two, let's say this is two, two weeks sprint. You can see it after two weeks, they will launch. They will go another two weeks, they will launch. They will go another two weeks, they will launch. You see the way they are keep launching. That is how they keep pushing values to the market. They keep pushing values to the market. And the companies are loving it because companies are capitalists. They want value. So you, all they want, give us value. And they, with Agile, they keep receiving value. Because the team keep on deploying value to them. If you are working on the software, every day you are releasing a different um, features to the the, the owner will be very, very happy. So, <clears throat> Scrum is widely used agile framework that emphasizes iterative development, self-organized uh, cross-functional team, and time box sprint or iterative. Scrum defines rules, events, and artifacts such as product owner, Scrum Masters, uh, Scrum Master, uh, Sprint Planning, Daily Stand-Up, Sprint Review, and Sprint Retrospective to facilitate project management and collaboration. Just like I said earlier, when we are starting, these are various activities that Agile created in Scrum to keep the team active so when you are in using agile approach you can never be dull you never a dull moment you keep on firing you keep on walking because there is no break and the, the way this uh, sprint is uh, structured looking at this diagram if a, a sprint ends today which is friday today is friday and we'll have a sprint that uh, ended today then on Monday, another sprint starts, saying that the team does not even have one day to rest. It keep on firing. So that is, uh, it's, the team might not like it, but we do not have alternative, and the market is liking it. But you, when you keep on delivering value, that is what you want. When the, you see that you are, you are, you are, <clears throat> your effort is bringing value or bringing something to the table. I don't see the reason why you shouldn't be happy. So now we are going to look at <clears throat> various, here yeah, some of the rules in um, this uh, Scrum. Agile have this two framework, uh, Scrum and Kanban, but Kanban is not that popular. The main popular framework is Scrum. So let's look at various rules in Scrum. Here we have rules like product owner, uh, Scrum master, and daily, sorry, um, developers. We call it developers or development team. So these are various rules. Looking at this diagram, this diagram is what we call the people inside the diagram are the Scrum team. They are inside the Scrum, these are the Scrum team. And the people outside the diagram are not inside the Scrum team. They are people that the Scrum team need to collaborate with. They are the product, the business owner. The business owner here is the project sponsor or the business, you can call it a stakeholder. Then we have end user. You're looking at end, end user here. This end user is the customer. Then we have domain expert. We have people who are, who knows the domain where we call it subject matter expert. So these are the people the team need to collaborate with at all time in order to keep on delivering value. You need to, the Scrum team need to Make sure that they capture the stakeholder's expectation is very key. In every project approach, you must understand 
the expectation of the stakeholder. Their objective, everything you do must align with their expectation, their vision. They have the company vision. So you cannot um, override it in any way. So that's why you keep on uh, working with them. Any software the team deploys, it must be demonstrated before them in order to get their approval. But it does not end there for the team to deliver a good value. To deliver a good value, you do not work only with the yes, he owns the company, but he wants profit. If you own the company and you want profit, you should be able to allow the team to understand what the user wants in order to get profit for you. Because all the vision, everything ends in profitability. And in prof to get that profitability, you must listen to the customers. So we constantly collaborate with the customers to keep on asking them questions. Give us review like this particular um, class I'm deploying now. At the end of the day, I'll ask you to give me review. You are the customer, so that I will know how to, you know, maybe some of you are complaining. Uh, we don't want uh, this uh, video. Uh, we we are, we are not getting it on time on um, our course portal. So it's affecting our ability to uh, deliver our assignments or things. So you keep on giving feedback the way we work, the way we uh, interact, the way we deliver uh, services and solutions to you people. That is the importance of constant collaboration with the uh, end users. And if the end users, they are happy, they will go out and tell other people, this is where it's happening. I'm happy with this particular school called Digital Technology Business School. I think they are the best now. Oh my God. And people will start coming. And that's it. And for us to continue to give the best, this kind of technology we are using, there's people who have called subject matter experts. We equally need to continue to work with them to understand um, for their input. And again, some of them understand the market very well. We we'll continue to work with them so that we understand the market very well. And who is doing all this collaboration with the external bodies like um, business owner, end user, and domain expert is the product owner. That is a rule in a, in a, in a scrum or in agile. So it's like he's in charge here. He's the governor here. So we have another rule called scrum master. And the scrum master is like a product, ma a, a project manager in, in agile. But they make it look, they remove a lot of authoritative approach from the scrum master here. He still does his work as a project manager, but more like a servant leader, not like uh, an authoritative leader. That is what they made it. Because they, made, they said it, the most of the project managers in conventional project management, they have a lot of power. They become so bossy. They don't have good relationship with the team. And because of that, it's affecting the value delivered so that is according to agile so this guy collect requirement the product owner collect requirement from the um stakeholders and end users and bring it to the team the team refine the the requirement the requirement is called product backlog once this requirement comes into here it becomes product backlog call it technical requirement and the team will refine it with the product owner and they will start working on the requirement to get value from the requirements. 
And who are the team? These are the team here. We call them development team. They are the cross-functional team. Cross-functional because it's not one person, different function. That is what I mean by cross-functional, cross-function. You know, we have function. Uh, one function here is developer. Another function here is uh, quality assurance. Another function here is developer. Another function here is uh, business analyst, solution architect. So we call it cross-functional team. So all these teams need to work together cross-changing cross ideas, um, technicalities, uh, in order to deliver value. So they are the team. Before we used to call them development team, but now the uh, Scrum guys say we just call them developers. So when you hear developers in Agile, it does not mean um, only the only the uh, programmers, even the business analysts, the solution architect, the quality, all of them are developers. So let's look at Scrum Master and what they can do. So Scrum Master here fosters communication. Scrum Master makes sure that the team have effective communication, a lot of uh, meeting going on, collaborating is the uh, duty of uh, Scrum Master. Then protecting team. The Scrum Master protects him from external body, meaning that you see this um, team, this particular business owner do not have rights to come and uh, start telling the team what the team needs to do. So if the product owner wants to talk to the team, the product owner need to um, talk to the product owner. The, the business owner want to talk to the team, the business owner need to talk to the product owner and the product owner need to talk to the team. That is uh, how it works. And if they want to do otherwise, the Scrum Master will come in, come in and buffer them. You cannot disrupt or distract the team or disturb them, nobody. So this is one of the things the Scrum Master does, protecting the team from the external source. Then two maintenance. The Scrum Master makes sure that all the tools the, the team are using are working very well. And um, they are okay. So these are some of the things they are doing. So um, and then reporting the team, the Scrum Master makes sure that. Uh, there is a comprehensive report about what is going on in the project through a uh, burn down chart and velocity. So um, please, you people should give me uh, a minute. I'll be back, just a minute.
All right, guys, sorry for the uh, breaking transmission. We are back. No problem. Okay, we let's start from this um, Scrum Master's um, functionalities. Fostering communication among the team. Make sure there is constant communication by uh, facilitating various events, making sure that everybody, there is transparency in what everybody is doing within the Scrum team. Then protecting the team from the external bodies, like you make sure that the stakeholders do not come directly to the development team. You need to protect them. If they want anything, they go through the product owner or through the Scrum Master. There is a JIRA, a popular tool we use in managing Scrum. We call it, we call it JIRA. There's other one uh, from Microsoft called uh, DevOps. So, is the duty of the Scrum Master to maintain, make sure that that uh, tool the team is using is very, very effective, working very well, and is part of the Scrum Master's um, a job. But then re reporting activities of the team need to be uh, reported, the kind of uh, charts, velocity, documentation is the duty of the scrum master that does all those uh, charts uh, most of these uh, bond down charts and velocity um don't worry if you're working as a scrum master you don't need to crack your head because most of these tools will always automatically generate it for you so you create a bond down chart a bond down chart is a chart that shows you how the progress of the work and the velocity is uh, a system that shows you the capacity of the team, the amount of work the team can take at any point in time to make sure that they are not uh, over labored and making sure that they are not biting more than they can chew. Because we always encourage the team to take what they can do in order to bring out value. The team cannot say, oh, because we we took so much work we couldn't finish it you cannot say you couldn't finish it you must bring a value and because of that you must make sure you take what you can do to the sprint and that is where this the scrum master comes in to guide them making sure that they are not taking what is beyond their capacity so we are going to look at that um in business analysis Then we have um, meeting facilitation. The Scrum Master facilitates various meetings such as daily stand-up. We already talked about daily stand-up, uh, sprint retrospective, sprint planning, uh, sprint review, um, backlog uh, refinement meeting. And these are very, all the meetings the team have is being facilitated by the Scrum Master. Then we have Agile coaching, one-on-one -on -one coaching. You find out that so many people in a team, in a Scrum team, do not understand this um, Agile or Scrum very, very well. So some can make it in a team. You can become a business analyst. You must not be uh, Agile or will have Agile knowledge in order to become a, an effective business analyst. You can find out you become a business analyst or a tester, and you don't have good knowledge of Agile. So it's the duty of the Scrum Master to start teaching you how Agile works. So 
Scrum Master is a coach, agile coach as well, one-on-one, -on -one. not only the team members, you coach the organization how agile works. I find a situation where a director do not know what is Scrum Master. One for a to ask what is Scrum Master. So don't expect everybody to know what is Scrum. For a director not to understand, he might come become a director. You don't know how to become a director. He can become a director through inheritance or through other means. You must not become a director through working as a project manager or work. There are so many ways of getting there. So in a situation like that, it's the duty of the Scrum Master to start coaching the whole organization on how to you know, adapt to Scrum. These days, so many companies are into uh, migrating into Scrum because they are seeing the the uh, benefits of Scrum. The person to hire in this situation is Scrum Master for this kind of migration. So the Scrum Master must equally have good knowledge of conventional project management and uh, uh, Scrum um, agile project management. Like some of us now, when we finish this, we we'll have good knowledge, balanced knowledge of both. So you can go to organization, talk them through, manage them. So for, for you to do that, you must have had an experience on working on school, which we are going to do as part of our work placement. Then team support. The scrum master um, try to support the team if there is a, a disagreement. Conflict resolution is the duty of the Scrum Master to try to um, resolve issues, uh, bring harmony within the team as quickly as possible. Then removing of blockers. The most important duty of a Scrum Master is to make sure there is a hitch-free uh, sprint. Uh, if there is any problem, it's the duty of the Scrum Master to address the issue. Any block, we we'll call it blocker, is the Scrum Master that remove the blocker or, or block the blocker. Any challenge, that's why we have daily stand-up. So that every day, the Scrum Master will try to see if there is any blocker or there is any challenge coming from any of the team members. The way the daily stand-up works is that on daily basis, the team will assemble in a meeting. The meeting is time box. Time box means that it cannot exceed a particular period. Its time is 15 minutes time box. We have to start learning how to use this particular um, terminology in Scrum. Because if you plan to write your Scrum certification, it's not so difficult. So if you are planning to write it, you must understand all these terminologies. So the, the, the daily stand-up is time is 15 minutes time box. Within that 15 minutes time box, the team will assemble the and every team member, this the scrum master will give every team member opportunity to talk. And when you talk, you'll be able to tell the team. What you done? What you've done the previous day? What you are doing on that current day? And your challenges so far, based on what you've done uh, on the previous day and what you are planning to do on that particular day. You have any challenge? If you have challenges, the scrum master should be able to discuss it within the team. If it's something that cannot be resolved within the team, the scrum master will capture it and take it away and go and look for solution to resolve it. That is what the Scrum Master. So that is the way to manage risk in agile environment. That is the best risk management because while trying to have this daily meeting, we capture um, risk at early stage and resolve it, mitigate it. But in waterfall, where the team meets once every week, to do a red meeting. You find out that it might be late. When they are capturing a risk, it might already be late. 
But in Scrum, they do that every day. That is the first thing the team will do before they start their work, having daily stand-up. And like I said, this daily stand-up is a must. And it's not something you send by email or you is something you have to make if you if you guys are not working remotely once you come to the office everybody log into their computer they will they will have an, a meeting point you cannot uh, relax on your table and you are, you must agree on a meeting point where people need to assemble to have that meeting it's a 15 minutes meeting so it's not going to take time where everybody will talk through what they are doing and according to uh, scrum or sprint this sprint or the team cannot be more than 10 people so you find out that the number is not too much for you people even if there are 10 people they can quickly talk about it, everybody can quickly give accounts of what they are doing within 15 minutes and wrap it up it's not a, that is not where the scrum master resolve an issue is just a place to capture a situation and if you are working remotely <clears throat> then you people need to use something like video conferencing application like the google meet or zoom and during that meeting everybody must put on their camera and everybody must talk you cannot say i don't have anything to say you how can you not have anything to say don't you have any deliverable you are working in a team and everybody have deliverable within the so if you don't have anything to to say it means you are not part of the team so that is how the team keep on collaborating and bonding because people must talk about what they are doing there is no secret scrum promotes high level of transparency so you come in public and tell people what we are doing to make sure that you people meet the goal so that is um, part of the team Scrum Master help the team to achieve. Then look at the product owner. The product owner here manages the Scrum backlog. Like I said, the backlog is requirement. The product owner captures from the uh, business owners and the um, customers and the subject matter experts. You know, subject matter expert can be the domain experts. Domain experts like the, the people working within the process. Let me say domain expert in a, in an application like a CRM application, if the team are working on CRM application, a domain expert or subject matter expert in CRM application can become the marketing manager or the sales manager somebody who have good knowledge of um crm or that environment marketing environment or sales environment so that is the work of the product owner to capture requirement from this group of people the business owners the which are the stakeholders the customers or the end users of a product and then the the domain expert and then refine this particular product backlog when you capture this product backlog you will refine it it's part of the management so the management is when you capture them you bring this requirement to the team with the help of a business analyst and developers, then they refine the uh, backlog. How do they do the refinement? They do the refinement by writing user stories and writing acceptance criteria for the all this backlog. So a backlog is a user story and acceptance criteria. So. We are not going to talk about how to write user stories and how to write acceptance criteria because it's not the duty of a project manager. It's the duty of a business analyst and uh, a product owner. So we are going to be talking about that in business analysis. So 
and release management. The release management here is after building all these um, small user stories, uh, small features, it might not be released immediately. It's the duty of the product owner to decide when they will be released. The team can just develop develop a, a feature and uh, keep it in their in, so, in somewhere they're supposed to be. It can be in the dev environment wherever the school master uh, the, the the product owner wants it to be. For instance, the team can develop all these uh, features here and it's not yet released. So they can decide when they want to start releasing them. They can start releasing them two, two or two or three or whichever way they want to release them. So they might say, we are going to be releasing them during the uh, uh, December period. Is the duty of the, when the, they feel the market will appreciate the, the the feature very well. That is when they release it. So it's the duty of the product owner to decide when it's going to be released. What I mean by release management, and then stakeholder management or engagement. You continually engage with the stakeholder because the other team members do not do that. The product, the scrum master only goes to the the stakeholders when there is a situation, when there is a problem. So he's not going to, to capture requirements. It's the only the duty of the product owner that goes there to the stakeholders, to the customers, to capture business requirements. Then we have the developers. The developers are this group of people. They are self-organizing. Self-organizing means that they are giving uh kind of autonomy level of autonomy to do their job so once the item has gone into sprint when item goes into sprint means that they start building the the solution they start designing the solution they start coding the the the, the, the software nobody is coming there to start bullying them telling them what to do how they are going to do it and that is the duty of um, one of the duty of uh, duties of scrum master to protect them from external body to make sure that nobody comes in to keep to start harassing them, directing them, or distracting them because they are self organizing. They want to do things their own. They assign responsibility within the team. Nobody tells them this is what you are going to work on. Unlike in an agile uh, waterfall, the product manager will be assigning responsibilities to the team members and tell them when he wanted to be due. But here, it doesn't work that way. The team is self-organizing, so they have this autonomy to select the kind of work. Everybody working in the team, nobody tells you, uh, you must take two items or you must take two user stories you work based on your capacity and based on your expertise so some people will be there busy doing the testing some people will be there doing the coding so like uh, the, the quality assurance person there because you know it's a quality assurance all he's doing is uh team test testing within the team reviewing within the team the developers there will be there coding the business analysts will be making sure that they, there is constant refinement of the product backlog so these are everybody have their job within the team so we have designers we have uh, ui we have testing and we have delivery a lot of activities going on there so and according to Scrum, there is only three rules. The three rules here is Scrum Master, Product Owner, and Developers. There is no business analyst. 
there is no programmer there is no all of them are called developers you see here they call them developers so if you are a business analyst and working in a team you cannot in agile environment you cannot say you are a business analyst although people always call them but according to scrum guide they are called developers everybody here they are all called developers <clears throat> then let's look at the scrum process this is the process how the scrum is work the end-to-end -end process of um a sprint or a scrum we call it software development life cycle in agile environment and it starts from here this is where it starts where the product owner captures requirements from end users which is customers and uh, team and other stakeholders uh, another thing i want you to understand here is that we have what we call end users and we have customers and some people call end users customers some people call customers end users but whichever way if you hear this it can be used in i can interchange use interchangeably and the user is the final who is going to use the software and it's not uh, wrong when they are called customers as well so because you might be seen and user and then say customer you might get confused i just want to clarify that so and the stakeholders here are the sponsors the business owners then the product owner capture requirement from this group of people they are external to this uh, screw and then these features when capturing them they are just features and they are not refined you capture them then with the end help of the team you refine them and create them it becomes a product backlog you see them now it becomes a product backlog so this is the product backlog this is the requirement captured and then from this product backlog when you are refining them you make sure that the most important items or the most important requirements are on top and the least important are at the bottom so you see we have one to twelve requirements it means that the number one requirement that is on top is the most important and the number 12 here is the least important so why we are doing it this way is that when the team are going to start selecting items or selecting uh, user stories they are going to work on they are going to start from the top so that even if there is no along the line there is a shortage of uh, resources or whatever something happened it means that the most important items has been taken care of and the team cannot come and start picking items from the uh, bottom they must be working from the top so all the awards they have to choose it from that is the rule then after selecting these items the team will come together and have a meeting to decide how they are going to work on these items and if there is some of these items they selected or this requirement they selected that is ambiguous or is not well refined they do not understand this is the main purpose of this meeting so that they will have another meeting talk about it make sure that everybody understands the purpose of this particular meeting and then or the purpose of this particular sprint event or this uh, period of time they are going to start working on item and here they are, must have a goal a goal means that they must have what are we going to create they will agree on what to create for instance if the team agreed on that they are going to create 
a feature called view in this um, Google Doc. You look at, you see here we have view. They must select item that will help them to create view. So if they are selecting item that will help them to create view, let's click on view and see various user story. View here is, um, is a feature. If you click on it, we see there is other smaller features called user stories. So for them to be able to create this feature, they must be able to select those particular user story that will help them. So let's click on view. If you click on view, you see we have how many user stories we have here. We have mode, we have comment, we have text width, we have to print. These are various. So these are the items they need to select. There is no way they want to create a view and they will start selecting uh, features like new open or user stories like this. So the user story they will select will be this kind of user stories from the backlog. If they want to create a search, you see, I click on insert, which is another feature here. You see opened up, you see different user stories. All these things you are seeing here, we call them user stories. Then if they want to create format. So now if the team here having a meeting, they will agree on what to do. That is what is going to become the sprint goal. The sprint goal is that we are going to, within these two weeks, we are going to create a format or we are going to create a tool in um, Google Doc or we are going to create help in Google Doc. So that is what they've agreed. And every user stories they are going to select from this uh, backlog. At times you see a backlog like this, it will contain up to 200 user stories. I'm not lying. I've seen that. How up to even 300 user stories. Even user stories that will be developed in the next three years. They have them there. So you can see the Scrum Master, uh, the product owner, they does a lot of work. I've done that. And it's not it's not that easy. But there is you see how so many users. So, so that is why you have to work, prioritize them, refine them. So make sure you select the right user stories to be able to create uh, what the stakeholders and what the customers want. Once that is being done, then the team, that is what called that's what they are doing in this meeting. How do we select the right user story to create the right feature? And that is the goal. Once that is done, this items they selected from this product backlog you see this item they selected you see the product backlog is big but this is sprint backlog these are the items they selected is no longer called product backlog all the user stories picked from here are no longer called product backlog they are now called sprint backlog and this sprint backlog are what the team are going to work on that sprint and like we say, a sprint is a period of time from one week to four weeks. The team need to select the kind of uh, week they need to work. If they are working on two weeks, they cannot come to another sprint and say, we are going to work on uh, three weeks. Once the team decide how many weeks they are going to work, they call their sprint. Is going to become statutory in that project or in that organization that the team was in two way sprint. So it means that whatever they select here, they will do it within this sprint or which is within this time box. And they will create uh, a value. And that value, you see it here, you see it here. After this period of time, this value will be created. And this value will be taken to the stakeholders and they will be presented before the stakeholders to show the stakeholders what they've done. And they will call 
an external person called a user or a customer to come and test that particular uh, feature they've built before the stakeholders to see how it's working. And after then, the stakeholders will give their review as that they are, they are happy or they are not happy. When the stakeholders are giving their review, it's an opportunity for the product owner to capture more requirements. The stakeholders will say, okay, you've, you guys have done a good job. For instance, here, the stakeholder can say, in this tool you guys have done, yes, um, very well, you captured this, all these three, uh, you captured the user stories up to this uh, dictionary, but for us, that is a good job. What we still want this uh, feature to still have uh, voice typing, uh, notification setting, preference, and accessibility. And during that feedback, the product owner will capture more requirements that will be deployed again. That might be in the next sprint, depending on how urgent the stakeholders or the customers want that particular extra feature. And that is how the team will continue to work. So during the sprint, you can see daily stand up here, daily scrum, where the team will continue to have the list until they finish this and deploy it. And while the work is going on, we still have a backlog ref refinement. Within these two weeks, the team are working, they still make out time to keep to refine some items they need to work on when they finish this one. They don't need to finish before they start refining so that it will become easy for them. That's why the team starts another sprint immediately. So because while working on this, they are still refining. So they see they, they are very busy. It's a very busy team. And once they finish the sprint review, capturing um, feedback from the stakeholders based on the one they've done, they come back as a team. This is only the team members. The, the stakeholders are not joining, only the Scrum team. They will look at what they've done, call it a re, uh, retrospective, sprint retrospective, where they inspect their house and adapt. They say, oh, in this is a kind of lesson learned meeting. It's a lesson learned, but in sprint it's called retrospective. They say, uh, we didn't do well. How we, if we have done it this way, it would have been better. So they will have to capture or say where the team members had a misunderstanding. They say, what led to this misunderstanding? They make sure that they clean up the house call it house tidying before the next uh, project or the next sprint starts. Once they finish that, they will finish, they will do this meeting the same day. Once they finish sprint review, they start retrospective. If it's, if it's on Friday that they done this sprint review, maybe by two, by 12 o'clock, they finish the sprint review by 12 o'clock, they will go on a meeting, maybe one hour meeting from 12 to 1. By 2 o'clock, they will start a sprint retrospective, which might last like two hours uh, or three hours because it's very, very important because this is the time to correct a lot of mistakes within the team. So they might start this from 2, 3, and 4, and then they close for the, for the week. And then the following Monday, they come back here and start another sprint. That is how it works. So now look, let's look at various events in this um, sprint. We have various events. All these things are what we call the Scrum or uh, Sprint Artifacts. So here we have sprint planning. We have um, daily scrum. We have um, sprint review and the retrospective. So we've already 
talk about this, like um, we say this sprint planning, the goal is for to the main the main purpose is to come out with a sprint goal and uh forecast sprint uh, and they have a forecast of what they need to do and come up with a sprint backlog that is what they need to do so that is the adaptation so it's all about taking item from the product backlog and refining them and selecting the the work they need to do for the um the sprint period then we have daily scrum daily scrum is a time for the team um to inspect and adapt on daily basis like i said is a kind of a risk management approach in uh, uh scrum then we have um sprint review sprint review is when the team do present the increment to the stakeholders for inspection and then to capture feedback and then we'll have a sprint retrospective so it's time for the team to collaborate look at everything they've done kind of a lesson learned to see where there is an actionable improvement so with this, we are going to summarize everything here by looking at this um, this uh, uh, cheat sheet. So this Scrum cheat sheet is where we squeezed everything in one sheet. Everything about Scrum. So we we'll call it cheat, mean cheating. For instance, we are writing an exam like what we call microchip. You know, only we call this microchip. Everything is squeezed in, inside this uh, sheet. Starting from, we've already talked about the four agile value. And then here yeah, we'll talk about 12 agile principles. Then we'll talk about four scrum rules. Then we'll talk about five scrum events this is what makes agile all this everything here so we'll start as expanding it it can become a full textbook but it's not so difficult uh, that's why we'll be able to squeeze it together so under number one agile value for agile value say individual and interaction is telling us that in agile individual and interaction is better so it's said individual and interaction over processes and tools and again it come here it says software working software over comprehensive documentation meaning that when the software is working it's better than all this comprehensive documentation in waterfall waterfall believes so much in documentation and become so bureaucratic and number three say customer collaboration over contract and negotiation so waterfall believes so much in negotiation contract right paperwork but here agile say that is the team the main thing is collaboration not uh, this uh, paperwork doing it or like what is on the paper responding to change is better than following a plan 
So when there is a changing situation in the market, quickly respond, follow the trend and saying, no, we have a plan. This is uh, our plan. So that is what Agile is preaching. Then we'll come to 12 Agile principles. I says here that the highest priority is to satisfy customers through early and continuous delivery of valuable solution. So customers are happy when we constantly keep giving them value. It might not be big, but slow and stay, keep on giving them value. That is what Agile is saying. Unlike um, waterfall that is planning to give you the whole value in bulk. Then welcome changing requirement, even late in development. So he said when there is um, a, a, a requirement, you keep you have to welcome a requirement. So it cannot be late. Unlike uh, a waterfall who believes that once there is um, the project have started, they are it, bringing a change, they will start a crime of a scope creep. But agile, there is nothing like scope creep in agile. So even late in the development processes harness change for the customer's competitive advantage. You see what they're saying? Then number three says deliver working solution frequently. So they believe in constantly delivering value, working solution. Number four says business and people and developers must work together daily throughout the project. So they believe in they working daily will create an opportunity to detect a risk at early stage in the uh, project and it will create in, increase um, transparency within the project. Then building projects around motivated individuals give the give them the environment and support and their trust and trust them to be done. Here he's talking about cross-functional team. You must build product up around people that you trust and you give them. So when there is a team and the trust has already been bestowed on that team. There is no need of uh, micromanaging them or, or keep spying on them, uh, monitoring them. You make you must pick a team you have trust on. Give them that uh, freedom, autonomy to do their job because you already trust them. All you need to do is uh, support them. The most efficient and effective method of conveying information to the to and within development team is face-to-face -face conversation. So I said it earlier that agile pro promotes face-to-face uh, -face talk, whereby even if you are working remotely, everybody must put on their camera. You must see everybody must see face to face, not by writing letters or sending email. Because somebody can send you, I see a city, somebody will send you an email, an email or a letter. But when you meet the person one on one, the person will start telling you a different thing. Working solution are the primary measure of progress. So the solution must be working. Agile promotes sustainable development. The sponsor, developer, and the user should be able to maintain a constant pace indefinitely. So they mean that 
there should be a constant pace. If we, if the P, the, the team or that's what we this velocity, the scrum master must try to understand the capacity of the team through the process called velocity. To get that velocity, the team, the, the school master will understand their capacity in the first scrum and under, understand their capacity in the second scrum. You allow the team to work like three different uh, sprints. So you have to capture their capacity in different sprints and then get the average. And that you will become what you'll be preaching to the team to be working within that average so that they will be on a pace. That pace will help them to keep on delivering constant value. That's what we mean by sustainable development. Then continuous attention to technical excellence and good design enhances agility. So technical excellence means that there should be high level of um, experienced personnel within the team. Then sim simplicity is the art, is the art of uh, maximizing the amount of work uh, not done as is essential. What I mean here by simplicity is that in Agile, Agile try as much as they can to keep it simple to avoid ambiguity. That's why even if you are writing a user story, a user story cannot be more than two lines of uh, word or higher two statements. When a user story becomes like three statements, then you need to break it down into two user stories. It must be simple, and it must be measurable, and it must be time-bound. So it must be very simple to avoid confusion within the team. You must use common language. There, should, there is no vocabulary in Agile. Use common language, every technical language, all the people within the Agile environment will understand. And here it talks about the self-organizing team. The team is self-organizing they need some level of autonomy for them to work as a team and here it talks about the reflection and adapt at the end of every so regular interval meaning that at the end of every spring the team must come together to reflect and adapt at the end of every spring and at, at the beginning of every day the team must come together to reflect and adapt. It's very, very important to keep the team fresh and going. So let's look at various tools, uh, Scrum, um, four rules here in Scrum. It should be three, but some are arguing that even the Scrum team as a team is a rule on its own. And that's why the capture is here, it says Scrum team, meaning, Scrum team is both a development team, product owner, and Scrum master. All of them come together, we call them Scrum team. Some people are claiming that it's equally a role in um, Scrum. But the most popular role we know is product owner, a developer, and the Scrum Master, which we have spoken about. I'm not going to talk about them, discuss them again. Then we have five Scrum events. These are the various events that makes a Scrum. We have uh, the Sprint itself. And then we have uh, sprint planning and then we have daily scrum or daily stand up when you hear daily stand up or scrum some people call it daily stand up some people call it daily scrum it's the same thing so if you hear 
hear from different just know that it's the same thing. Then we have a sprint review and we have a retrospective. So in a sprint, here we talk about the purpose. The sprint is a fixed length. We've talked about is a fixed length of between one week to um four weeks. That is the standard according to Scrum Guide. Every sprint should be the same. So when I said it earlier, when the team is starting a sprint, if it's two week sprint, it must continue to practice. That two weeks will become statutory. You cannot be changing from one week to two weeks to five. You don't do that according to Scrum. As soon as one sprint end, the next sprint begin. I said it, if one is stopping on Friday, the next is starting on Monday. The sprint is a container for all the Scrum events. So everything that is happening in Scrum is within the this particular period of time called the sprint. And for these sprints to begin, it starts from the activity called planning. So this planning is to understand why the sprint is valuable. What prioritize items the team will work on and how the team will uh, complete the work. So they need to, the, the meeting is to look at the, the prioritized value they are going to work on. How are they going to uh, do that? And how are they going to complete it? The main thing is to get a goal, a sprint goal, and decide on how to achieve that sprint goal. That is it, simply. So the Scrum is responsible. This, the Scrum team, which is everybody, all the team members, everybody is called the Scrum team, is responsible for planning each backlog items and taking, taking on the realistic amount of work based on their capacity and performance. So here the team must work together to make sure that they are not committing what they cannot do. They must look at their capacity. The team, the Scrum team plans the work together with the goal of completing the work together. So the team is together and they are one. There is no other name when the, the team is start working, like in development team, there is no other name. They are together, they are one. You cannot call them. You can't say this is a developer or this is, if you are referring to them, you can't say, hey, business analyst. There is no business analyst. They are one and they are together. They plan, they do everything as one person. The sprint goal, selected product uh, items and the plan, delivering them are called sprint backlog so when the all the items selected and the goal is what we call backlog once we decide every sprint must have a goal once a goal is decided that particular goal and the items to help them achieve that goal is what we call sprint backlog then we have daily scrum the purpose is to inspect towards sprint goal coordinate efforts and adapt plan everything they are doing is to make sure that they inspect and adapt the developers is for the daily scrum is for the developers to improve communication and decision making the format can vary, but 
the focus is on hitting the sprint goal. The meeting should be less than 15 minutes. So it's less than 15 minutes. It cannot be more than, so it's a time box. It's time box, it's 15 minutes time box. So that is the uh, daily scroll. Then the review here, the purpose is to demonstrate progress, inspect the team and the team result and get feedback from the stakeholders. So it's here for the team to present the item to the stakeholders so that the stakeholders will see what they've done and then give feedback. It's important that when the team are trying to demonstrate to the stakeholders, you don't do this demo in a slide. It's not like we are coming to present a slide. It's a software that you are presenting because I see so many people where the team, when they will come to present what they've done to the stakeholders, they will create a, a slide. A, a a PowerPoint slide and capture screenshot of what they've done. That is not a demo. Demo is when is is what we call UAT user acceptance test. Well, it depends on what you've done, but if it's software development, the demo is when the team comes to bring a user to test the particular user stories they've developed or the features they've just finished creating. So retrospective is already with this because it allow the scrum to pause, reflect, and plan ways to improve team quality and effectiveness. So that is the three, the five events we have here. So if we can squeeze all these things, this uh, cheat sheet and cram them, or understand them, digest them, and assimilate them, then we already is a Scrum Master. The certification is just for the celebration, but this is all the what we need to know. If you are hearing us, Scrum Master, Scrum Master, this is what you need to understand to become a scrum master. No more, no less. Then we are done with scrum. And there is another framework in Agile called Kanban. It's not that popular. So Kanban is an Agile methodology that focuses on visualization. It uses a board for visualization. If you remember when we treated uh, tools, there is a, a tool called Trello that uses visualization. If you go to uh, we have it in Basecamp, but it's new in Basecamp, the, the, the board in Basecamp. But if you go to um, Jira, Jira uses it, they will have a Kanban equal in Jira. We have it in Trello. We have it in uh, monday.com. We have it in um, almost all the project management uh, collaborative software, they have it. So they have it in Asana as well. So it's for visualization, to visualize the workflow and limiting work in progress and continuous delivery. So Kanban board uses Kanban uses Kanban board with column representing different stages of work and the card representing individual tasks or users, user stories, allowing team to visualize work, identifying bottleneck and optimize flow. So it just is the main purpose here is just to make your work to be visible. Nothing more, nothing less. So by the time we are going to be working on um, a Jira, all of us are going to see how Kanban can be used uh, together with Scrum. We can combine these uh, two framework, or you can. There is no way you can 
uh, use only and some people can use only Kanban only if you don't want to work within Scrum. A lot of people does that. Yeah, some work can be done uh, with only Kanban. But in most cases, people combine Kanban and uh, Scrum together. So there is uh, not much about Kanban, so that's why I'm not. Um, uh, I didn't capture much on Kanban because it's not uh, a big uh, issue in the agile environment. So we have benefits of agile methodology. What are the benefits? Flexibility and adaptability to change. We already talked about how the flexibility and adaptability to change helps in driving value for the organization. Early and frequent delivery of value, valuable product increment. It helps us to keep on delivering value on constant basis, giving customers new value on, you know, frequent basis. Enhance collaboration and communication among team members and stakeholders. Because of various events, it's encourages communication and their collaboration improve transparency visibility and stakeholder engagement one great aspect of scrum is this transparency where everybody comes to talk about what they are doing you cannot hide what you are doing in um so if you're having a situation everybody know if you are not competent everybody know. whatever you are doing everybody know because it's not hidden. So the fifth benefit is greater focus on customer satisfaction and value delivery. We already seen how uh, all these multinational companies have used this to take their company to the next level through customer satisfaction. So anything you are doing and you are satisfying customers, your business is going to thrive. Nobody can stop that. The challenges of uh, agile methodology requires cultural shift and mindset change within organization. You know, before this agile arrives, so many people have been working in waterfall environments. They are used to that. It becomes their safe haven. It's difficult to take people to move away from their safe haven. It's difficult somebody has been working within a particular environment for 20 years and now you come and you start telling the person this our child will do this and that they will not they don't want because they don't want to learn new technology they don't want to learn new ways they, they just want to be where they are so it requires high level uh, uh, an intensive change management strategy in order to get people to move their mindset from. Even if they adapt, there are some situations where they adapt, company will say, we've now adopted the uh, agile approach. But you see, their one leg is still in um, waterfall. And that is what I say that so many companies are <coughs> using um, waterfall and the um, agile. They combine it together and they call it wagile. So there is no, uh, methodology called Wagile in um, legally, but everybody knows that so many companies, what they are doing is Wagile. Wagile is a combination of waterfall and agile. So, another challenge here is that may not be suitable for projects with fixed requirement or strict regulatory regulatory compliance. So where there is strict nature, is it doesn't work here because it's very flexible. And this flexibility, some of these strict regulation might not really be, um, it doesn't work in such environment. Another requirement, another challenge we have in the Agile is it requires active stakeholders involvement 
and commitment to provide timely feedback. It's difficult to get feedback from stakeholders. You know, some stakeholders, they're always uh, busy. So even if you uh, uh, provide them uh, this after a screen demo, some of them will say, okay, uh, give us time. So it's not easy to capture this uh, feedback immediately. So these are where we're having delays. Even customers trying to capture feedback from customers, it's not easy to capture uh, feedback. So that's why companies, some companies use where of kind of enticement, uh, free gift, whatever. They have so many, you know, ways to bonus, to entice customers to get their feedback. Another challenge here um, is that um, it can be challenges to, it can be challenging to scale agile practice to large or complex project, projects and organization. Why this is a difficult is because agile do not believe in um, number. Agile believe in a team of, a team of um, not more than, a team of three to 10 people. So that is what Agile believes in. Agile believes that when the team is become, when the team becomes more than 10, they become noisy. And Agile believes that so many, too much hands spoils the soup. They don't believe in noisy. They feel that team become you know, noisy, they cannot concentrate, they can't achieve. So that is one of the major problems. And so many companies who are trying to adopt Agile, you see them, after all, we are just at uh, 15. So we can just, uh, we are working in Agile environment, but they are 15 in numbers. But in real practice, as long as they are no longer, as they are long as they are more than that 10, it's no longer Agile. But they will be, they will find they are, we are just 12. So we can still do it, we are not much. So that is what Agile is saying. So these are one of the, the major challenges so many companies restricting to the number of people that Agile or Scrum um, suggests. It's a suggestion because they are not uh, making it as a law that if you don't do this, uh, you'll be prosecuted. All this is approach. They, they, they are just suggesting this is the best way you do this and you get this result. So conclusively, Agile project management offers flexible and adaptive approach to project management, enabling team to deliver high quality outcome in a dynamic and uncertain environment. This dynamic and uncertain environment is the key. They are breaking barriers in complex, we call it complex environment. By embracing agile principle and practice, organizations can increase project success rates, improve stakeholder satisfaction, and respond effectively to changing market condition and need. Changing market condition like uh, software market environments is changing very fast. And customers need, customers need these days, it's very difficult to satisfy customers. But with Agile, you can do that. So that is Agile project management. And to take this to the next level, I will suggest you go to um scrum.org in scrum.org you download a copy of scrum guide everybody must do it if you cannot say you're, you're an agile project manager without you having to finish reading um, no matter the 
where you've gone for your training or whatever, you must finish this scrum guide on your own. So you must, so let's see scrum.org. Scrum. Scrum.org. So in scrum.org, this is it. You type scrum.org. Um, here, you see scrum.org. If you type scrum.org, if come down here, you see scrum guide. You click on this Chrome guide, it will take you on the page where you are going to download this Chrome guide. You download it and you read it up. So that is the assignment. And then if you want to grab a certification, you have so many certification. Let's look at certification here. If you click here, you see various certification. All the certification. So, you see Scrum Master certification. From here, you can take your Scrum Master certification and become a Scrum Master. Here, if you want to become a product owner, if you want to become a professional agile leadership, professional agile um, leadership as well, professional Scrum fascination skills, Professional Scrum Developer, Skill Professional Scrum, Professional Scrum with Kanban. So these are various, let's click on this. This is for Scrum Master. You see it here, we have um, stage one, stage two, stage three. So once you've done your stage three, you become what we call agile coach. That we call it so. And this is um, as it scrum master to get started and become a scrum master. This is it. This is the cost. The cost of this test is called is um two hundred dollars. When I wrote this, it was ninety. It was uh, ninety dollars, but it's now two hundred dollars. So two hundred dollars per attempt. Wow! During my own, it was ninety dollars per two attempt. But I just did it one attempt, and I got the most score up to. You must score up to. Let's see it here. So the certification details here, 200 per attempt. You must score up to it 5% to pass within a time of 60 minutes. You need to answer 80 questions within 60 minutes and then score it 5%. And it's multiple choice and uh, multiple answer through or false so that is um that is it and then here they have got what they call the um, screw open screw open screw if you click here you can have you can start uh, testing um free screw test which you can start preparing yourself before the main test. And the main test is equally come from this open screen. So you can, if you want to start practice test, you can come over here. And the good part of this is, is that it's a lifetime certification. So once you pass this, there is no expiration. It doesn't expire. That's why so many people go for it. And it's very, you see, to write this within um, 80 questions within one hour. It's not that simple, but if you read all this very well, it's not a big deal. 
the easiest way to do it is practice practice this so go to this open scrum from here you can start your open scrum just click here the question will start generating and the answer you'll be answering is 25 question so if you want to try it you can answer 100 questions by writing this open scrum like four times you click if you do it four times that is 25 25 and 25 that is 100 question that will help you to know if you if you can score 85 or if you can pass all of you can score up to 100 then you are ready to go and start applying to write your scrum certification so that is it and um we are going to finish up our methodologies on monday where we'll be looking at waterfall and um prince two so um sorry for delay for tonight if you have any um question i'm here to take the question thank you sir i don't have any question tonight okay all right so Sorry, can i ask something quickly yeah in our job if there happen to be more than 10 in the group will they need to split the group then yeah if there happen to be more than 10 then the there is need to split the group so that's what we call and then we have a another scrum master for that group so well, some companies don't want to have um too many scrum masters because too many scrum masters mean too many pays and one scrum master cannot manage to uh sprint team at a time so that's what agile say uh, what uh, scrum guide said so if you want to be discreet and principle and uh, discipline within uh, agile or within scrum it must be 10 people in a team well they are not um, they are not more than 10 people well they are more than 10 people what you are doing is not uh, agile if you want to be uh principled or discipline none of your meeting like daily stand up it cannot exceed 15 minutes once you are there your daily stand up is taking uh, for five minutes you are just on your own thank you You're welcome okay um if you don't have any other questions, um, we'll have it, we'll call it a night. Um, this night is um, it's, it's longer than usual, but I tried to cover this so that we can be moving faster. So, thank you, and um, we'll see you again on Monday. Thank you, sir. Thank you.